I think a hacked U.S. election could tip the balance to one candidate or another. Over the last few months, hacking and politics have become a dangerous combination with the DNC and Clinton campaign getting hacked. We're here in Las Vegas for Black Hat. It's a conference where the best hackers in the world get together to talk security. Now, while there's no indication that the voting process has ever been hacked, we decided to ask some of the hackers here if it were even possible. You guys were pulled in to help the DNC figure out whether or not they'd been hacked. And you did figure out that they had in fact been hacked. And all signs point to Russia. What are the implications of this? I think this is really a, a bit of a watershed event. I mean, 40 years ago, we had Watergate, right? And that, that's where you had a, you know, a couple of boxes of files that were stolen. Now we're talking about 20,000, 30,000 files that are being dumped on the internet. Do you worry that there are other state actors sitting uh, in on some very internal, important conversations that pertain to the U.S. election? That's 100% certainty. It's not even a, a doubt in my mind that there's, there's other actors that are out there that have yet to be found. Um, and it just, it's too big of an opportunity for them. Uh, it's too easy to get in. But it goes beyond the campaigns being vulnerable. What about the actual machines we use to vote? A security firm called Semantic actually purchased a couple electronic voting machines on eBay to see how secure they really are. Now, you have to remember that there are a ton of different types of voting machines out there, and each U.S. county uses what they feel works, including electronic and optical scanning devices, and about 75% of the country still makes their choice on plain old paper. Now, in this particular case, these hackers say they found some major issues. Here's their perspective. So what we're seeing is what a voter would be presented with when they go into a precinct. So when you get your voter identification card, which is a smart card, and you would insert it into the machine, and then go ahead and start your voting process. With the smart cards running small little computer systems on there, a device as, as tiny as this can be used to manipulate the smart card to allow you to vote multiple times. So the idea behind this is anyone who's able to kind of get their hands on the cards that are going to be used, if they have the technical skills, they could essentially build what you've just built, which allowed them to go cast their vote as many times as possible. And I can probably put about 400 uh, votes in myself in less than a couple minutes and the poll workers would be none the wiser. Take us through what happens after you submit your vote. What are other ways that this could be vulnerable? These devices have to communicate with some sort of database system. We don't know what the transport network looks like between this machine and the actual database server. So anywhere along that path, if a hacker was to have something installed, then the communications could be intercepted. Given all this research, what would you say is safer, electronic voting or voting in paper? Well, I can tell you this year I will be voting via paper with a mail-in ballot. As someone who is kind of knee-deep in the vulnerabilities, he always sees like a, the worst could happen. What keeps you up at night? A compromised election. <laughs> Now, Varner says he doesn't believe we're that close to a compromised election yet, but he does want to raise awareness of these types of vulnerabilities. What I did hear from these guys is that even if one voting machine is perceived as compromised, that has broad implications in how the American public will view the political process.